Hello, my name is Bria and welcome to my library. Today we're doing the mid-year book freak out tag and I'm actually really excited because looking back I've actually had a really great reading year so far and it's all it's been like so much quality and like I feel I'm getting I feel myself getting excited just getting excited just thinking about the books that I've read so far this year so let's I want to do an overview and then I'll do the tech questions in after and if you want to do the tag like fill out the tag in the comments definitely let me know I definitely want to know like your favorite book your most surprised your biggest disappointment tell me <laughs> so all right so now on to the overview of the year so far so I've read I'd say like 13 books I've finished 13 books two of those would be short story collections and then I did three DNFs books that I did not finish and so let me do an overview of the books that I've read so far since it's not that many of them. So I read Jubilee by Margaret Walker which is basically a civil war novel told from the black perspective and the enslaved, enslaved perspective as well. How I Wrote Jubilee and other essays by Margaret Walker which mainly was for how she wrote Jubilee but also how she thinks about literature and black women in academia and stuff like that. I also read a poetic equation conversations between Nikki Giovanni and Margaret Walker which was conversation it was just um a transcript but in book form of a conversation between Nikki Giovanni and Margaret Walker I reread Akata Witch by Nettie Okorafor which is a book that's about Sunny who learns sh she's born in the U.S. and but lives in Nigeria and she is a like 13 year old girl who learns she has powers and she learns to how to use those powers and along with her group of friends like they need to, they, they have to go on a mission. I did not finish Guest on the Roof's Phantom of the Opera, which is like a classic set in France based on like a phantom inside the opera. Sego Bavaris Conde, I did not finish. It's a book about this, it's a family saga following this family that lives inside this, the kingdom of Segu. And they're, it's following them in this crucial time in African history when Islam is spreading, but also, Christianity is a, like approaching and colonialism is approaching and like it's like a, a pivotal moment and it's like it was too much. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson is a, that's a it's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde so that one's like very famous. Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier which follows a woman who falls in love with this rich man while on well well he's on vacation I guess. She buries him and she goes home to this big mansion and lives in the shadow of his ex-wife or late wife. I did not finish The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, which is a book about a, it's basically a book about like vanity and like self-obsession and self-indulgence and stuff. The History of Mary Prince by Mary Prince is actually a, an a formerly enslaved woman's narrative about her experiences. House of Dyes Drear by Virginia Hamilton is a children's literature about a family who goes to live into this house that is haunted and it is haunted because it is, it was a house in Ohio that was formerly a station on the Underground Railroad and the abolitionists and the formerly enslaved men were both were murdered in the house so it's the story of the family moving into the house and experiencing the house. Roll of Thunder Hear My Cry by Mildred D. Taylor is a children's book as well about a family who has this land in Mississippi and they're trying to keep their land all while Cassie the fourth grader is learning about about life in Mississippi and also learning about racism and how that impacts her as a young black girl outside of her home and also how that impacts her inside her school as well. So Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl by Harriet Jacobs was a former enslaved woman's narrative and it was very literary too and she talked about her experiences but also the experiences of those around her that she witnessed which was super super interesting. Edgar Allan Poe's story. So it's just a collection of Edgar Allan Poe stories. A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness, which is a, Disco a Discovery of Witches. It's a, it's the first book in a trilogy about a, a witch who falls in love with a vampire who unearths this uh, ancient manuscript who needs to learn how to control, like, you know, get used to her powers, kind of like Sunny in The Cotta Witch, but she needs to get used to her powers and control them so she can keep everybody safe. And then Crick Crack by Edgewitch Dandicat is a short story collection by about about Haiti, about Haitian history, Haitian culture, and black women in their experiences. I just wanted to give you a little overview, um, an outline kind of the books that I have read so far this year and did not finish. So I know I'll talk about a couple of them in the tags, but just so you have like all of it in context and how all what I've read so far this year is gonna influence what I'm trying to read for the rest of the year. 
So, got my notes. Let's do it. So the first question is, what is the best book I've read so far in 2022? So I will have to say Jubilee by Margaret Walker. And as I mentioned, that was um, the Civil War novel that follows the from the Black enslaved perspective and it follows before, during, and after the war. And honestly, I love that book so much for so many reasons. That book, it just felt right. Like that book felt right for me. The writing style worked for me. It's actually hard for me to describe why I like Jubilee so much now that I think about it because I really enjoyed the information that it gave me. There's so much like information about Georgia, <laughs> information about like the lives of enslaved people, information about the characters, like I love the characters by the way. And that's another thing I liked about the book is the characters, there's so many different types of characters, which means there were so many different perspectives, which I guess is not a guarantee. That's like a, a nod to Margaret Walker's like brilliance, but there's so many different perspectives about like reconstruction, escaping, about, um, I don't know, so many different things to where you didn't feel like, I mean, there were parts of the book and like based on like my further research I did on Margaret Walker, where you can see like kind of how um, her and Viri's like outlooks maybe were similar, but you also see other characters that completely disagree with Viri on like the way things should be. I just feel like that book was so well done. It's such a, a such a great entry point to history, but also such a well done like exploration of someone's life. And I really enjoyed my time with these people, even though there were a lot of things that were really hard about the book. So. Yeah, that's my favorite book so far this year. But also I really enjoyed, at the same time, I really enjoyed The House of Dinesture by Virginia, Ham Virginia Hamilton, which is about that family who moved into the house that was for formerly a station on the Underground Railroad. It was, it had the Gothic, it had the information about the Underground Railroad that I wouldn't have known otherwise because Thomas is, Thomas is the main character, he's like 13. His dad is a professor and because he's a professor, it kind of gives, him, and Thomas is interested in history. He's like, you know, he loves his dad. He's following his dad around and stuff. And, and he's the oldest child. So it's kind of, it's like an entry point for history for that person who's reading the book and learning it through Thomas's eyes as he's learning it. And I love that and for that reason too. And also it was just, it was kind of, uh, I don't read a lot of thrillers. So take that, like use that context. but. I feel like that book was like also like thrilling and grippy. Like I was like, well, I gotta finish it now. Like what's happening? Because I did watch the movie like what, like 20 years ago. Um, but I don't, I remember like the overview, like I remember the gist, but I was like, wow, this is really good. So I just think I really love that book for those, like, you know, the, the gothicness, the descriptions of the house, being in the house, but I also really like the history part. And I like that it felt fun while I was learning the history as well. Cause there's a lot of stuff that I learned from that book that I didn't know um, about the Underground Railroad, Ohio. Like I just, something I've never thought about. So I really had a good time with that book. So the best sequel I've read so far in 2022, I actually am a, I struggle with sequels. I could have read the Akata Warrior sequel, Nettie Accord for a second book after Akata Witch. And I could have read, well, I'm supposed, I'm kind of currently reading um, A Shadow of Night by Deborah Harkness, which is the second book after A Discovery of Witches. And oh, well, as you can see, I love, I love reading about witches. But I, I think I honestly, I think that I, I'm worried about reading the second book because I'm worried that I won't like it as much as the first book. I just, it just worries me. Like, I don't want to ruin the love that I have for the first book, but I 100% feel like I'm going to finish A Shadow of Night, that second book in the Discovery Witches, after Discovery Witches. But I will say that's why I have, like, I struggle with the second book for that reason. So no sequel so far this year. New release you haven't read yet, but want to. Definitely Shine Bright by, um, Daniel Smith, who is one of my favorite writers, came out in April. I want to say it came out in April and I pre-ordered it. So it came to me that day. And that book is a history of black women in pop, but also a memoir at the same time. And I've read, I feel like I've talked about this book a lot, but I just, I know I'm going to enjoy it, but I just haven't gotten to it yet. So the next question is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I 
don't have any. Um, I actually, the only book that I was like, okay, I need to get it now is that Shine Bright book that I just mentioned. Other than that, I'm really focusing on books that like classics, historical fiction, and honestly, if something catches my eye, I'm cool with that. But mostly I'm focusing on like 2005-ish and before because I'm kind of, there's a lot of reasons for it, but mostly one, I really want to focus on, okay, who's influencing everyone that's like writing right now? And who influences, who influenced their favorite writers? But also like, there's so many phrases that we say and things that we do that are based on like literature from whenever. And I'm like, okay, let's focus. Like I, I just, that's just where I want to focus my like time on. Cause I've also, as I mentioned, I haven't been enjoying reading for the last couple weeks. Well, I've been, you know, I've been enjoying reading, but I haven't been enjoying reading as much for the last couple of years. And I think it's cause I've just been reading like the new stuff and it's just like thing after thing after thing. And like, I just haven't, I'm like, okay, let's like build my foundation. What do I like? what genres do I want to focus on? Like I started, I'm like, oh, I like Gothic. I had no idea until I started reading classics this year. So trying to focus on older stuff. So that's why I don't have any anticipated releases for the second half of the year. But if something comes up, I'm not saying I'm not going to get it if I really want to. <laughs> oh, okay. So now we're talking about what is my biggest disappointment for this year? That would be The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I overall feel like the book is about like vanity and self-indulgence and like self-obsession and like how that's bad and it's told through the story of these like three men the painter Basil Dorian Gray and Henry Hallwood or something like that and there's like an actual painting of Dorian Gray and like as his like self like as he as a person becomes like as like as he becomes a bad person the painting deteriorates or something like that um as you know i didn't finish the book so okay, the reasons i didn't like it one i don't vibe with um oscar wilde's writing style like i thought i would i was like yeah we're i i i because i've heard so much about his writing is beautiful but i think it's just his writing is not for me for me it didn't feel like his writing was beautiful like beyond the surface level and that's why i think it was it just wasn't for me um and then another thing was the characters like i feel like maybe that was part of the book's point but i couldn't deal with it um they're just so insufferable like all of them like i'm like i cannot and this it was so not it wasn't just not enjoyable like henry Hall, or the, the guy lord henry lord henry that was his name um he was just like so every time he walked into like a scene i'm just like oh gosh here you go he thinking of everything about everything oh my god like free me so i just freed myself so yeah that was like I couldn't I just couldn't do it and just honestly I think it, it was more f disappointing because I really haven't seen that many people dislike it so at least like in my searches because I'm like I'm, I'm always like when I dislike something that everyone loves I'm like okay what am I missing because I'm clearly missing something um yeah that one was that was that one hurt because I fully went in expecting that to be like one of my favorite books like I was like oh yeah I'm gonna read this again in the fall you know no so something interesting about these classics because I'm going to transition from Oscar Wilde to Charles Dickens and I feel like <laughs> that's going to be relevant in all these European classics because um, I really don't haven't studied European history I don't know really much about European history other than like you know facts that I can list on like about like World War One or World War Two, but I find it interesting the way Jewish people are described which it does make sense actually if you think about like specifically like world war ii and like the things that happened that lead up to that but i'm just like okay i'm very curious to read more and learn about like okay what are these perceptions that are clearly being cr created and upheld in literature and like how did that influence that and how we think about jewish people today because i was like oh this is aggressive like and and so so it's another reason that it's interesting because i go into these books like okay i there's probably gonna be like, I don't know what, um, I think it was in Great Expectations. Um, Charles Dickens said, or like a character was like, uh, you just treat me like I'm just like a negress slave or something. And I was just like, 
okay i'm just so yeah i'm just very fascinated by like the what perceptions are created and upheld in these classics that i'm reading for the first time so with that said let's talk about my biggest surprise of the year so far I, my biggest surprise so far is that i am enjoying classics and even though i've had two european classics is saying what classic because i would say there's three classics i um dnf so far i think seiko might be but yeah so there's three classes i dnf so far but um i've actually overall and i think those are just like personal choices like not necessarily like oh this book is terrible i'm not gonna act like i know which books are terrible because i i can't i don't i'm not putting that pressure on myself but i'm currently reading like four books but i'm also currently reading among them is great expectations by charles dickens and i am loving it so far so i think Oh yeah, so I just finished part one, so I'm about to go into part two. Um, and what, it, like, I think, I will say, part of the reasons I don't, I didn't think I would enjoy classics is because of this book. This is my copy from high school, Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. And huh, look at my name, or I guess this is how it will be. But the part of the reason I didn't think I would like it is because like I have struggled so much with like classics, especially class. Okay, classics written by white men um, in high school because I had no problem with Zora Neale Hurston in high school, Paul Lawrence Dunbar, Langston Hughes, you know, all of these, and even college. Um, but I didn't think I would like classics from white white men basically. And I'm very surprised that I do enjoy this. And I'm gonna keep reading. Um, so this one follows Pip in his like journey, I guess. I don't. I actually. Um, the one thing about this book though is the end notes it spoiled like another book and I was like bro I was gonna read that next but anyway so this book is I'm also I'm surprised that like that I'm able to comprehend and understand as much in this book I'm surprised that I honestly am connecting with Pip as a character like he is actually he's actually a little bit annoying but i actually I can connect and understand like uh, and relate to him in a few ways and that is actually honestly probably even more surprising um ah oh, it's so surprised it's but then as i i couldn't it's like a gift and a curse honestly the to have information so like so close to you at the tap of your phone because i was reading about because maya angelo she actually liked charles dickens her favorite book about him was a tale of two cities and she was talking about how she just uh, I mean, it may not have been true, but she was talking about how she grew up poor too, summarizing, but basically he would probably not treat her like the white men in Arkansas would where she was growing up. That was summarizing, but, and again, I don't know if this is true or not. Both of them have passed away, but I can, I can understand how she got there, at least from the first third of this book. And I'm just so, I'm surprised. I like his writing style. I like the character like not even necessarily like I like the character but I like the depth in which I could connect to this character and I also like um I don't know I like the journey like I feel I feel the journey happening and in a short amount of time um so yeah I like how I'm able to engage with this book and it's it's also surprising so the next question is favorite new author debut or new to you would be Daphne du Maurier and I can't even call Rebecca which is a book I read by her a surprise because I felt like I would like that going in but that book had me like I was like the whole second half of the book I was like oh my goodness <laughs> like I was that book I love that book so much I think her writing style is amazing I love her gothic Ness and I've already picked up a couple of her books so I picked up Jamaica Inn which is another gothic I think all her books that I picked up are spooky um and I don't know if that's all she writes because I feel like she has a lot of a good number of books but I'm curious if she like focuses on that gothic or she does other genres so I picked up Jamaica Inn it's more it's another suspenseful one where like a woman goes to this inn in like Cornwall and she's like feels like she's gonna die so like that that underlying like fear is there as well and I also picked up something called I think it's like don't look or don't look now and another like spooky uh scary type thing and yeah I I think the thing that hits me 
about Daphne du Maurier is her writing style reminds me of how I feel when I'm reading um, Nnedi Okorafor or Yoko Ogawa. So that is a really good thing. <laughs> like I really feel like I'm comfortable here. I'm enjoying myself. I feel like it's beautiful but also not so much mental math like with Charles Dickens or something. Like I am having a good time. So um I'm like yes 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 so that's someone I'm really like excited to keep going with because I like um her work and I want to read my cousin Rachel too um but yeah so I'm very curious about um how I I've, I've heard that her other books some of her books are even like better maybe not as popular but even better than Rebecca so I'm really I'm really ready I'm ready newest fictional crush yeah I can't can't say I have one for this year it's like I wanted I don't I definitely it's definitely not Matthew the vampire from um a discovery witches and I think the biggest reason is because vampires like like the stage of that book where she where uh Diana Bishop the main character was learning about Matthew like him as a vampire honestly I was like, I found all that absolutely disgusting. Like everything about vampires, like honestly, I find vampires are not my friends. So <laughs> I cannot, I cannot. I think if he wasn't a vampire, I probably would feel differently, but like absolutely not. I mean, if I had to pick a crush, it would have to be Diana Bishop. She's really cool. She's really badass. And that leads me into number nine, newest, fa newest favorite character. So if I had to pick a fi fictional crush and newest favorite character, all of it maybe would be Diana Bishop because she is like, the, okay, so the history is studying at, working at Oxford Fellowship at Oxford, like however she was doing that. I'm like, that is so cool. I aspire. And I like her growth. Like I like her growth from like being so anti, um, she was so against like everything to do with being a witch and like leaning into like her true talents and gifts to growing into like not only using those gifts but also being confident and like like I don't know standing up for herself when she need to I mean sometimes she made bad decisions but you know don't we all so the next question the next question is book that made you cry I would have to say there's two books that I would say books that made me cry but I don't necessarily cry but like I definitely felt emotional enough to either have to stop reading or I would have to like I was like oh I need to I need to do something else after this because I'm not I am unwell so the first book would be Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl because by Harriet Jacobs because I think that what moved me so much was her feeling like the the feeling of being so miserable that she did not want to be alive because it was so like the conditions she was living in were so horrible and like just everything about it was horrible like it was just terrible like there was nothing good about it and I think the other part that had me like super choked up was the when talked about her before she had kids but also her feeling when she had kids like talking about like the whole idea of having kids while enslaved like it was just all like it was just it sucked it was heartbreaking like so I think the other thing but with that said reading Harriet Jacobs story made me like feel like it also Jubilee and Mary Prince like it all led up to me being ready to read Beloved because of some of the things that I know are like major things in Beloved are in those books that I've kind of read previously like I know Toni Morrison like wrenched out of me but those that's one book that made me uh like I would say not cry maybe choked up feeling things feeling a lot of things um and then the other one was um Roll of Thunder Hear My Cry by Mildred D. Taylor and I, I'm actually really excited to read other books in that series because it's the Logan Family series but that book I think that book was like a deeper connection because I saw similarities to there are many differences but I saw similarities to like my family because my like maternal side at least originated originated in Mississippi and like they didn't have land necessarily like how the Logans have like this big big like space of land and that's what they're trying to keep in that story or in the series but the, the way the houses was set up that's exactly how my grandma's like house was when she was little and then like the way that her dad had to go to Louisiana for work was exactly what my family had to do and something like go to the military too to find work like and then so like there's a lot of similarities to where to where 
the way Cassie grew up, just watching Cassie like expect the world to be one way, just cause like she's a person and she grew up and she's treated with respect with her family. And at school, I mean, she does get on the people nerves at school, but like it's a different thing. Um, so like just watching her grow up and just like expect the world to be one way and then they disappoint her and like literally are just racist and horrible and there's just so many terrible things that happen um I think that one was just like hard I was like I was like I need to read something fun because at, at that point I read so many books back to back um that were like just oh, heavy I need to read something fun after that but I'm like just even just thinking about it now I was just like damn you know like I wish it could be better for her but I think that was also the goal of Mildred D. Taylor's book so look these authors are talented okay like they are amazing <laughs> book that made me happy um The House of Dyer's Year as I mentioned uh, a discover of which which is oh honestly re -re I reread Akata Witch by Nadia Corfor like that book makes me happy every time I read it um all <laughs> honestly in like I love these books so much that yeah I, those books made that just they just made me they made me feel good and not all like there were lessons in all of them well not as good every wishes I felt like that was just pure fun like that was just you know a good time but I feel like even in Akata Witch there were lessons in that book in The House of Dice there's so many lessons but they were also really a good time and also I really am very interested in children's literature but not more than I thought so what books do I need to read by the end of the year? So I mentioned Beloved. I really honestly want to read that actually soon. Like I'm like itching to read that. Um, Malambo is something that I've been, I didn't put it off, but I kind of like, oh, I'm going to read this, read this. Beloved follows a an escaped enslaved woman from what I understand. But don't tell me. My mom almost spoiled, she did actually kind of did spoil it a little bit for me the other day when I was telling her I wanted to read it. And I was like, shh, shh, shh. So, I, just, that, I don't even want to know anything else about Beloved. Um, and then I also want Malambo is about, it follows an ens, enslaved group or at least an enslaved man. I started reading it, but I was like, I need an audiobook, but they don't have one. So I got to get it together on that book. But Malambo follows at least one enslaved man in Peru in the 16th century. That's where we're starting. But I think they go into the 17th century as well. That's all I remember too. Um, but I really want to read those two like soon, 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 soon. That's kind of like where, where my focus is like for the summer. And then um, Alexander Dumas, I want to read by the end of the year, one of his books. So Brown Girl Reading is doing a read along for the month of July. And they're doing Three Musketeers because um, Alexander Dumas' birthday is July 24th. I don't know if that's why they're reading it. Like, I feel like I can kind of try to tap into that. I did want to read Count of Monte Cristo first, but I feel like if I read one, like, I'm not going to be mad. Like, those books are big. <laughs> and then, yeah, I also want to focus on books that are set in Spanish-speaking countries. So, um, I got Malambo. Um, I have this book, which I'm probably going to work on, work on, but read while I'm here. Um, it's The Shadow of Night. Oh, no. No, it's The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. It's like a mystery, but it's about books. It's set in Barcelona in 1945. Um, it's after the war. A city slowly heals from its war wounds and Daniel, an antiquarian book dealer's son who mourns the loss of his mother, finds solace in a mysterious book entitled The Shadow of the Wind. And I, I'm just kind of just going to just chill and like have fun reading because I've been trying to read some nonfiction, but I'm like... I think I just feel I need some fun but yeah so I'm trying to read books set in Spanish-speaking country, countries um because I want I, I need that extra push or you know it's like a constant reminder to be like hey you wanted to study Spanish today didn't you so like I just want to keep you know put that in little pieces and pockets anyway on on top of um learning history because I don't know anything about honestly usually when I was focusing like on Peru like it's probably it's probably the country I know the most about even though I probably don't even know that much but like, I don't know anything about Spain in which the Spanish yeah so um yeah so those are the, the three that I can think of and there's probably many more there's so many books I want to read there's so many books I want to read by my birthday in October there's so many books I want to read by the end of the year I don't know but I'm also enjoying myself um DNFing more books enjoying more books 
focusing on like what I want to focus on even if it may not like be the what everyone else is focusing on which is hard um but also like I see the results in like enjoying myself way more so that's what I'm doing and I'm really having a good time if you want to fill out the tag in the comments definitely do that also let me know if you have your favorite book your biggest surprise biggest disappointment fill those out in the comments let me know send a book emoji if you just want to say hello but i hope you're having a great day hope you have a great reading year and if not i do hope it turns around and happy reading